Hello everyone. If you are a working professional and still struggling to phrasing a proper email, then I think you're watching the right video because today I'm going to discuss about 10 important factors that you should remember while phrasing an email. Emailing is a very big topic, so uh, I'm going to speak about the aspects that you should remember while phrasing a formal or a business mail. So, to know more about this topic, continue watching this video. Number one, simple and accurate subject line. Just imagine if the subject line of the mail is very big with a lot of information and complex terms. Will that be pleasant situation for the recipient to read the entire mail? Definitely not. The recipient may even skip the mail without reading it. So it is always better to go with very simple at the same time accurate subject line. For example, if you want to invite your team members to celebrate a success in your workspace, you are sending an invitation through mail and so you are giving a subject line like a very big one with a lot of information where and when the event is going to happen. That is completely inappropriate. So you can just go with a very simple subject line team dinner in this invitation or success party invitation that sounds more accurate at the same time it's very short and it serves the purpose right so always choose a subject line which is very simple at the same time accurate number two introduce or reintroduce yourself so when to introduce or reintroduce yourself there are certain situations where you have to write an email to a person who is working in a different organization. In such scenarios, definitely you have to introduce yourself along with the name of your organization. Or sometimes you will be writing an email to a person working in a different department in the same organization. In such cases, you can introduce yourself with the name of your department. Maybe you are a person working in HR department you're writing an email to a person working in the finance department so you can start your mail with hi this is Emma working in HR department so that would serve the purpose so you're introducing yourself as well as the department so the recipient will understand who is writing to them so this is very simple right number three avoid using slang words short forms and emoticons why you should avoid them because you're writing a professional mail, right? So these kind of terms can be used in an informal mail where you're writing to your close one or loved ones. But this is inappropriate in a business mail. You should try to avoid them uh, any kind of jargons or slang words like bro, chill, stuff, cheers. So you should avoid such kind of terms and also short forms like FYI for your information so the other person may not understand what is FYI also the emojis that you use in whatsapp and other social medias so these kind of terms and these kind of emotional uh, conveyance should be avoided in business way this will help you to maintain the professionalism number four convey the message politely why you should convey the message politely because you are not going to write emails only during pleasant and positive scenarios. There might be circumstances where you have to convey your inconvenience or a negative situation to the other party. So always maintain the professionalism. Don't accuse someone in your mail. Try to make your tone more indirect and polite so the other person may not get hurt by reading your mail. Remember still you are writing uh, a business mail that should be more professional so never accuse a person always use a lot of softeners and polite tone in your email if you are conveying a negative situation number five your mail should be clear and precise let's consider a situation where you are sending a business proposal to the other party through email you definitely have to include a lot of information about the business plan with more details and clarity. But do you think that will help the recipient to understand the business plan without any confusion? Definitely not. So this is an inappropriate approach. So what you have to do is you have to discuss such kind of detailed information in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Instead, 
you can try to arrange a meeting through email for such discussions. So do not propose any business plans through email or do not send a lot of information through email which may cause confusions uh, to the recipient who is reading the mail. So make sure your mail should be clear and precise. Number six, provide warning when you are attaching a long file. Sometimes you don't have to write a lot of information in your mail. However, you have to set an attachment which is very long. Maybe the size of the file is very long. So in such cases, it is always a best option to warn the recipient that you are attaching a file which is very long or very large in size. Number seven, respond in a timely fashion. Emailing is not just about writing emails, it is also about responding back to the mails. So you are going to show your professionalism by responding back to the mail within a particular time. For example, you have to respond back to mails within 24 hours. So that would be appropriate in a business and formal uh, scenarios. So this shows the professionalism and also this shows the commitment that you are having towards the business. So always remember to respond back to mails within 24 hours. Number eight, respond with a thanks. In the business sphere, everyone are busy with their own commitments, right? But still a person is taking few of his time to give you some information about the business. So it is always appropriate to respond to the mail with thanks. So you are acknowledging the person's time and effort and that's why you are telling thanks while starting your response. Thank you so much for your message Mr. Ramesh. So that sounds more formal, polite as well as professional, right? So always when responding to a mail, thank the other person for sending you information and spending some time and energy on giving you details. So this is a very important thing you should follow when responding to mails. Number nine, know your audience and maintain the tone. So when you are writing an email, always make sure that you are maintaining the appropriate tone. Sometimes you have to write an email to someone whom you never met or maybe you are you have met this person only once but you are kind of following up the person about the business plan in such cases it is always better to go with more formal and indirect tone but if the person is kind of close to you and you have a very good relationship with this person but still that is a professional relationship you can go with a little more neutral tone which is not very formal but not very casual as well so always know your audience and write the mail according to the designation of the person or the connection between you and the person. Number 10, do not email in a rush. So just consider if you're having a lot of commitments to complete and there are a lot of things going on in your mind. Is it appropriate to type an entire mail and send it to a person who is your higher official? Definitely not. So if you are in a rush, definitely you will not have time to recheck your mails and uh, in some scenarios you may even miss out some information and you may make any errors in your mail. So it is always better to not to write any emails when you are really busy and if you are in a hurry. So if you avoid this, you can avoid a lot of errors in your mails because uh, when you are patient enough to write an email, you will recheck the mail and you can understand if you missed out any information or if you made any errors. So better avoid writing emails when you are in a rush or hurry or if you are very busy. I would like to add upon one more point with all the factors that I mentioned. It is very important that you check your email before sending it to the recipient. Because sometimes there might be some minor spelling errors or grammatical errors or some information might have been missed out like we discussed in the last scenario. So always recheck your mail before sending it to the recipient and this can avoid many mistakes that you are making in your mail especially in a formal and business uh, circumstances. 
that's about today's lesson. I hope you got a very good clarity about how to phrase an email in a formal scenario or to your business acquaintances. So for more such videos and more such lessons, please subscribe to our channel and get notification instantly when we post some updates about new lessons. So see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye. Bye.